Anyway, let me welcome Shajil sir to give the introduction to the speaker. Thank you, Navani. <clears throat> good been, evening. Okay, good evening. We have been sitting here for the past 57 sessions. That's a, that's a history. We could say that it's a history. And we started this program during the pandemic time, the COVID time, and it's continuing. And we are connecting a lot of people and a lot of institutions and a lot of scholars are coming to this forum to talk with our students. And really, all of us are enjoying. And the last two days, 9th and 10th of this month, we were at University of Calicut in our space camp. There was around 200 students from a different part of Kerala. They enjoyed well in that camp. And earlier, we had a session at NIT Calicut. And it's a, it's a real environment. Uh, the students and the vendors and the organizers are enjoying and for the, for the passion of science. That's why we all are sitting here Every in every session. The number of participants are increasing and we are streaming these sessions in of all the webinars for our students as a future repository of all these valuable presentations. And uh, in addition to that, we are proudly announced that the UL Space Clubs, that is under the umbrella of ULCCS, the Uralingal Labor Contract Society, is a from large cooperative sector in Kerala and that has been recognized by the ISRO, ISRO uh, one day before that as it's recognized as a space tutor. There is 20 space tutors in India approved by ISRO to propagate or educate the space education to the students and the public. That is, uh, that is a great recognition for this UL Space Club. The founder and member of this space club is E.K. Kuti, former director of ISRO, and K. Jairam, a former deputy director of ISRO, and uh, Dr. Mohammad Shahin, Calicut, University of Calicut, Dr. A. Sujit, NIT Calicut, Dr. M.K. Revivamarma, NIT Calicut. These are the people who are uh, mentoring and supporting as a backbone of this UL space club. Today, we are here in the 58th webinar. We are talking about the very fundamental topic that is the basis of everything that is chemistry. And today's webinar is uh, co-hosted by Spring Valley School, NIT campus, the uh, educational institution, NIT, that is co-hosting this program. And <coughs> I invite Sashirega ma'am to preside over this function. And I invite our today's honorable guest, uh, Dr. Kana M. Sudeshan, who is uh, presenting a wonderful talk here, and it is understood that he is a very famous speaker in India in the field of science. And I will introduce the, our guest, guest after the <coughs> presidential address of Shashirega Ma'am from Spring Valley School in IT Calicut. Welcome, ma'am. And I welcome all the participants, all the guests, once again to this forum. Welcome, ma'am. Shashirega Ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, respected Chief Case yes. Professor Anna Suration, School of Chemistry, I, sir. Founder and mentor Sri E.K. Kutti. Moderator Sri Shajil UK. Students and teachers present here. I am more than grateful to co host this informative webinar on the topic World of Chemistry. Firstly, I would like to thank the UL Space Club for organizing the session for the benefit of students. May your continuous efforts and will to do something for the society and help us move closer to a successful and fulfilling world. This informative se uh, session will not, uh, actually will not only guide us all, but also educate us. We are all surely grateful for this prospect. On behalf of Spring Valley School, I welcome you all and inform you that the webinar will completely enlighten you pertaining to the world of chemicals. All the vital aspects regarding the topic will be conveyed to you all. You shall exit this webinar with zero doubts as our educators will ensure that they answer all your queries. So I encourage all the students to come up with a good questions. Thank you, sir. 
thank you sashireka ma'am for uh, making your presentation address and we are coming to without uh, much delay we are entering to our program and let me introduce today's speaker is from aisar tiruvendapuram professor kana m suresh is uh, we are thankful so grateful and thankful to you sir for accepting our invitation to present or uh, some few the fundamentals of chemistry or the wonders of chemistry that is the basis of the uh, things all of in the real world uh, forever professor kana m sureshan is a chemistry professor and a research scientist he has published 110 research papers in highly reputed international journals Five, filed eight patents and have has given more than 200 invited talk and plenary lectures at various international converse, conferences worldwide he is an elected fellow of the indian academy of sciences and royal society of chemistry london he is a recipient of jsps fellowship japan alexander von humboldt fellowship germany ramanujan fellowship swarna jayanti fellowship and yam boston young scientist award usa bronze medals from chemical research society of india MRSA medal from Material Research Society of India Bhagyatara Award Rajiv Goyal Prize Technology Innovation Award and Excellence in Carbohydrate Research Award he has also received the incentive award for designing the shortest and economic route for the tuberculosis drug PA824 that's a very remarkable discovery from his part and he is an international advisory board member of the prestigious journal Organde Chem Chemi published by German Chemical Society and sorry for the pronunciation i made that may be in germany editorial board member of the journal ss applied polymer materials published by american chemical society and editorial advisory board member of chemistry europe and uh, it's a well known person lot of uh, teachers students are gathered here to hear our guest in this occasion and very well known people that's also remarked by dr jyoti basu who is sitting sir is also a professor there and academician and is also there with us and uh, jyoti basu sir mentioned that uh, you in this month you got a, a very famous and very efficient lecture uh, speaker in this month and we are proud to be that and we are getting the first person from aisar tiruvendavaram and i thank dr mahesh ayyaran for introducing dr kana suresh into this forum uh, again and i invite all the veteran scientists and the teachers and the, all the students curious minds join with us uh, to enjoy today's presentation presentation regarding the world of chemistry and i proudly welcome dr kana m suresh for his wonderful talk to our team welcome sir Thank you very much uh, for the introduction, Dr. Sir, for the invitation. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, now uh, I have a, I have two questions. Uh, how long is this session? And uh, I see the audience. Uh, some are senior people and uh, some students. And I have two talks actually. Uh, I don't know which one to present here. One is uh, about a very general. talk about chemistry and uh, applications of chemistry and and why chemistry is important for our life and people should not be worried about uh, chemicals hemophobia that's uh, more generic and i have another one which is more research oriented uh, lecture based on my research and some other research that's for the environmental protection only for environmental protection chemistry using using chemistry So, sir, if you tell me which one I should, sir, we have a heterogeneous group, but uh, by the continuous action of these things, and they are need to be acclimatized or adapted to the talk, and uh, it would be in between the higher level, and uh, that should be a medium range, and uh, if it is, it should be a motivating one, and at the same time they have to get some view regarding the research and all your findings, whatever it may be. Yeah, it's sure. up to you, sir. It's your, it's your pleasure. We are doing. Yeah. So in that case, I will I will I will talk about the research okay. talk. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have the permission to share my screen? Yes. Yes, sir. Already, you yes. know, our session is made. Please try it.
Yeah, I have to see which one. Just a second. Is it on? Can you see my slides? Can you see my slides? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a slide which I have made for some talk in Dubai. So forget about the date and the, this one. Right. And uh, this is for uh, an hour or uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes? How, how long? Right. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. So... Uh, once again, thank you for uh, invitation, uh, inviting me for this uh, session. So, in this session, I'll be talking about chemicals, how chemicals can be used to protect environment. And often people say that chemicals are bad and chemicals are pollutants and chemicals, in fact, uh, pollute the environment. So now, I will show you chemicals can be used to protect the environment. Some examples I am planning to show here. First, uh, let me talk about gels. Gels are, of course, you, all of you have seen some form of gels. For example, uh, Colgate gel or similar kinds of gel, shaving gel, etc. So gel is somewhere in between a liquid and a solid phase. For example, gel has properties of both liquid and solid, you can say. Liquid will take the shape of the container and so is gel actually. If you put gel in a container and it will shake, it, it will take the shape of that container. But if you remove the container, it will retain the same shape, but liquid cannot do that. And solid, of course, you know, they have a definite shape. Here are some examples of uh, the regularly used uh, uh, let me take the pointer. This is an example of uh, edible jello. This is a material which may be, which is made up of a collagen or you can say jelly material. Mainly it is water and very little of solid, which is a protein-based material. So that makes the gel and that has the specific shape, which was the shape of the container. And there are different materials which can form gels. One is uh, polymers, actually, different kinds of polymers, just, just like gelatin. Gelatin is a polymer, a protein kind of material. It's a product of uh, collagen, which is a natural uh, protein in human and other animal bodies. And that's what is used for uh, making gelatin, and that's what we use for making gel or edible gelos. And low molecular weight uh, simple compounds also can be used to make uh, gel uh, gels. And now it comes to two different types of uh, gelators. One is organogelators, the other one is hydrogelator. It means these guys, uh, these organogelators can gel only or gelify only organic solvents. In this case, hydrogelators can gelify water or aqua gels, you can say. So, for example, this is an aqua gel or a hydrogel. So we use usually this kind of simple molecule. This is a sugar glucose, and this is called mannitolin, and this is an acetone. And these are useless material for a supramolecular chemist, 
for any uh, uh, such purpose actually uh, so for making any gel material or something like that this cannot form gels because they are highly soluble in water because of high density of hydroxy groups but we can do some chemical reaction and we can make them hydrophobic partially hydrophobic and partially hydrophilic you can call it as amphiphilic we can make them amphiphilic by doing some reaction for example this is acetal this is an acetal we have converted this inositol to this tri uh, diacetonide by reacting with the molecule of acetone actually can get this kind of linkage now this is partially hydrophobic this is also hydrophobic this part is hydrophilic so in other words you can say it is an amphiphilic material so this is a schematic for that you can uh, you can see this uh, dumbbell kind of uh, arrangement i have shown this is hydrophobic and the, the middle oh is hydrophilic and when you put this in a solvent, a non-polar solvent, what happens is this will start self-assembling. That means it will undergo some kind of aggregation through this uh, attractive hydrogen bonding interaction between monomers. And that will form a supramolecular chain-like molecule that you can call it as a fibril. And several such small fibrils undergo lateral aggregation and make much more thicker fiber. And that fiber gets entangled in the 3D net and form a 3D network. And and there are spaces in between, and in these spaces, the gel, the the, mole, uh, the solvent molecules, water or organic solvent, goes and sit there, and that is what is a gel. Actually. So you have large amount of liquid and very little amount of solid fibrous material, which entraps the solvent actually. So that solvent is trapped in a in a, in a, a meshy solid matrix, which you cannot see, of course. By naked eye, unless you use some microscopic uh, technique, you cannot see this uh, meshy uh, matter. So this is uh, an example of a gel we have made in a RP flask using a particular gelator, which I have from the structure. This is from mannitol, actually. So this is a sugar sugar derived material. So this is in pump oil. And it's at one weight percentage. That means uh, there is one gram in 100 liter, I mean, uh, 100 ml of this uh, oil, actually. So it can jellify. Uh, one gram of material can jellify at least 100 milliliters of uh, this particular oil, pump oil. Of course, these are the techniques you may not be, I mean, you may not be able to appreciate this. This is uh, some technique called NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance. It is very similar to MRI scanning you must have heard of in uh, hospital center. So this is the technique uh, by which you can see the proton signal actually. So these are the proton signal of this hydroxyl groups. And essentially what we are doing here is we are slowly changing the concentration. You can see the concentration of this uh, uh, solution. And as you change the concentration, this hydroxy group signal is shifting uh, to a particular direction. And that says that it is due to hydrogen bonding. So this is the proof or uh, showing that it's a hydrogen bonded material. And this is, of course, another technique called infrared spectroscopy. And, of course, here also, there we, we have signature for this hydroxy group. This is here, actually, this big, broad peaks. And this is in the chloroform solution. This is in the gel form. In chloroform solution, the positive is around, around 3,600 centimeter inverse. But in gel, it is uh, shifted, actually, towards a lower wave number, it's like 3,200 or so. So this also says that it is due to this hydrogen body. And this is the microscopic picture. This is the electron microscopy, scanning electron microscopy picture. This is after, this is at the magnification of about 5,000. You can see the spaghetti-like network. This is a solid fiber which I was talking about. Of course, you can use... Uh, this material to make different kind of uh, jelly matter. This is uh, a cylinder, gel, jelly cylinder out of oil. And uh, of course, this is the UV visible spectrum. You can see this is the visible region, 400 to 800 nanometers is the visible region of the spectrum. And in that, the transmittance is very high, actually. It's almost 90% transmittance in this visible region of the spectrum. But in the UV, you can see this is uh, from 400 to uh, 200 there is a complete absorption. So from 100, it is going to zero, actually. So that means no transmittance, or this UV light is not being transmitted to the other side of the uh, uh, jelly material. So that's very good, actually. So that means this gel can be used to filter UV out. UV is bad, actually, of course, you know. 
that's why we don't look at it uh, during uh, look at sun for example during uh, eclipse or otherwise also. so this is a possibly a filter actually which you can which can filter out the unwanted uv radiation <laughs> So this look, this uh, jelly material looks like glasses actually. So the question is, can we use them in place of glass? Uh, of course, one important feature of glass is uh, one is transparency. Water is also transparent, but water can never be a substitute for glass actually because water has a very poor refractive index. Uh, a glass material should have very good refractive index like 1.5. The refractiveness of glass is 1.5. And water, of course, it's bad, of course, 1.3 also. So water can never be a substitute for a glass for any optical application. But we have made gelate, I mean, gel out of oil. Oil has a refractive index of glass, actually, 1.46 or 1.5. So in principle, we can use this, this material as glass substitute. We can call it as a soft glass because they are really soft. They are not fragile, actually. They won't break even if it falls. Another feature we have observed for this gel is if you cut this gel into two pieces and put them together, after some time you can't see the, the separation. So they are self-healing. It automatically heals after some time. Here is an example. Here is the picture actually. So we have cut this gel into three pieces and the middle piece we have doped with a, 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 a fluorescent material called pyrene. And uh, you cannot see that uh, the junction in this one unless you see in the UV uh, under UV light. Of course, under UV light you can see the fluorescence of the middle, the dot uh, dot uh, uh, piece actually. This is another uh, example wherein we have uh, connected eighteen different pieces actually, small discs actually. The alternate discs are colored actually with uh, perylene tetracarboxylic acid. Tetracarboxylic anhydride, which is uh, red in color. So you can uh, suspend them uh, horizontally and also vertically. That means uh, they are already healed after, after some time. You can make all these kinds of uh, structures, uh, cube, tower, uh, or this kind of hinge, and prism, cones, etc. And first, uh, we want to see whether uh, we can use it for uh, optical application. So we made a prism out of this just by pouring a, a, a hot liquid of this gelator in oil. And after some time, of course, when it cools down to room temperature, it will become, uh, it'll become a nice uh, prism, jelly prism. And of course, you can see the picture pattern using that prism. Also, if you put this in, and a watch glass, after some time, it will become a planar convex lens. And if you put two planar convex lenses face to face, you get a double convex lens. Of course, you can see my magnified here by looking through that lens. So we can, in principle, make functional optical devices like lenses and prisms because it has a, both a, a good refractive index and also the transparency. And possible application is, of course, you can make a UV. <laughs> UV protective glass. And also you can make this kind of, a, this is a oil immersion microscopy. In biology, when they use a, a microscope for a high magnification, like 400 plus magnification, they use this kind of oil immersion microscope because here is the objective, here is the eyepiece and the object is here. There is a gap of air actually here. As you know, air has a refractiveness of 1. So 1 1.5 to 1 actually, there is a change in refractive index for the, the light to pass through this. So that means this will, you will have an aberration in the image actually at high magnification. To avoid that, what people use is to make an oil drop between here. Of course, you know, oil drop cannot stay like this for a long time because it will spread. But we have made an oil block actually using our gel. So we can place that here. And also we can use it for adaptive optics. Adaptive optics means our eyes can change the focal length depending on the place where we look at. For example, if we look at uh, objects near to us, our focal length is some uh, value. And if you look at an object at far, farther place, our 
uh, the focal length of our eye lens becomes another one, I mean, differently. So this is called adaptiveness of our eyes. So we can, in principle, make adaptive optics using this particular gel because uh, by heating and cooling, you can change the curvature of the lens, the, the, the gel lens. So another application I am planning to show is uh, oil spill recovery. Of course, uh, this is uh, for environmental production. This is a big problem, uh, oil spills in uh, marine systems. So most of the oil rigs in the Gulf countries are in the sea, actually. For example, uh, Gulf, country, no, Gulf countries have a lot of oil rigs, right? So they have uh, oil rigs in the sea. And if there is any, any uh, explosion or any accident in the rigs, what happens is uh, tons of oil get spewed into the water. And because of the surface tension, it immediately spreads to thousands of square kilometers. And this will kill all the organism, I mean, both flora and fauna, for example, the swan or the fish or the turtle, everything it kills. And also the plants. And this will also come to us if you eat uh, fish, for example, the, the dangerous chemicals come to our, our body also. The usual procedure if uh, uh, to tackle with such oil spill is just to burn it. Just give a fire, it will burn. And if it burns, what happens is uh, most of it, yeah, this is what happens. So it spews a lot of uh, toxic uh, fumes to the atmosphere and pollute the atmosphere. Of course, uh, some will burn. The unburnable stuff will go into the water and again it will come to the system. And this is an accident which happened in Chennai uh, three years ago. A small uh, uh, oil spill actually, there was a small uh, uh, the, sh the ship which was carrying this uh, oil, crude oil, got damaged and met with an accident and a few, few thousands of liters actually, only very little oil has been in the water and we had a lot of issues actually to tackle even that. So as I said, the most uh, used, I mean, mostly used method is just burning, burning the oil from the sea. It is better if we have uh, such uh, if uh, there are any methods by which we can take this oil back because you are burning money. Oil means money. So this is the same oil which gives petrol, diesel, etc. So that's money actually. So you are burning money and also you are still polluting some, some. Uh, I mean, still polluting the environment. So there should be some material which can, which can absorb this oil and then we can not only clean the environment but also use uh, the, the recovered oil for normal distillation and get the oil back. We don't need to burn Money. This is another gelator we have made. Again, the same data I will not show you again. Uh, this is the microscopy image. This is after uh, 1,000 times, sorry, 15,000 time magnification. So you can see really fibrous uh, solid matrix wherein the oil get trapped. This is a simple experiment to start with. So here we have oil. Uh, this is uh, diesel actually, diesel and water. And of course, uh, you can spray a solution of our gelatin and after some time it becomes gel and you can take it up. I think I have a video of that. I will show you the video. If it is, if it is working, no, yeah, so, somewhere it's not working. Work. Just a second, please. Yeah, so this is the video. I hope you can see. Yeah, so this is, uh, we, are, we are adding uh, water and uh, mixing diesel and water. Of course, diesel will float over the, over the uh, water. This is sea water. Now, my student, actually, his hand, you can see, he is uh, dissolving this uh, white solid material. You can see the solid material here. In a making a solution of the gelato. This is the gelato.
Now he's spraying over the. Now he's just putting it over the bottom of the You can use, of course, a sprayer, sprayer also, normal sprayer, which is used for vegetable uh, insecticide spray for the garden, etc. After some time, he's uh, testing it. This is a euro coin, which is very dense coin, actually. So he's testing it, whether uh, it's sinking or uh, floating. Yeah, it is floating, actually. It is not going down, actually. So that means it has become gel, actually. It has become strong gel. So now, you will take out the gel. Gel means the, the diesel which we have put in the system. So, whatever is coming out of that is, but as this disc is nothing but diesel, a gelified diesel. So, all the diesel has come as this disc actually. Of the gel actually. Now you may ask how do we get the oil back actually? How do we get the diesel back? Very simple because uh, these are very fragile material. You can crush them and just by warming it, it will become normal oil. Now he's heating that, the gel. Yeah. So now, he's measuring that, how much he has got back. So he got about 97% of oil back. The remaining 3% is not here actually, but while heating, <laughs> while heating, some of the oil got evaporated. So that's why he got only 90 Plus percentage. <laughs> so, this is just a proof of uh, principle, actually. So, this is not really practically applicable in a uh, real scenario. For example, in a marine oil spill, you cannot uh, warm a solution and spray the solution and take the gel out using this uh, this material also. But it's, this is still in a in a lab scale demonstration. Let's see how we can improve to use for real application. So now, previously we have used only one purified diesel actually. Now, in the actual scenario, there is no diesel or petrol getting spewed into or spilled into a, a water. It is this kind of crude oil actually. So it should work with crude oil and there should not be any solvent. You have seen... My student was dissolving the solid in a solvent to spray it equally, I mean, uniformly. That's not ideal for a large-scale operation, actually, for hundreds of kilometers, actually. So, ideally, we should be able to uh, seed it using helicopter or so, as solid. So, we have also done uh, such, um, we have made several such gelators, about 18 of them in our lab. And we found that only one of them is able to do this one, actually. If you directly spray as powder, that will also gelify. I hope I have another video for that. Here we are not using the carrier solvent. And also we have improved that we are using real crude oil. And we have tested crude oil from different countries, eight different countries. Now he is... Uh, He'll show the structure of the gelator. This is uh, from glucose. We made from glucose, actually. And he's spraying that. Yeah, now you can see it's already jellified and you can scoop it out as a jelly material. Of course, uh, whatever you see on the side of the beaker is only on the side because it is sticking on the sides. He will show the camera just on the top. You can see the water is clean. Only this is because it is touching the walls. A little bit of oil is still remaining. See, the camera is on top now. The water is almost clean. Still, this doesn't solve the real problem because in reality, 
will have this kind of oil in thousands of uh, square kilometers, at least hundreds of square kilometers. And we can scoop out such jelly material using any such uh, devices. That will be really difficult. So they are also fragile. They become smaller, smaller jelly material, and it will be difficult to catch them. So, again, further improved. Actually, we have improved further. In this case, what we have done is we have uh, used, uh, this is recycled newspaper, actually, or cellulose. So, we crushed the newspaper in Nixie and then impregnated with our gelator. One of our gelator we have impregnated in this case. This, there is nothing actually, just the paper. This is paper plus the gelator. And let us see how this works. So again, crude oil from different countries. And these are, of course, same crude oil. This is without gelato. This is with gelato. gelato. So this uh, this material sucks in all the gel, uh, oil actually. The moment it sees oil water, it will suck selectively oil. Once it sucks the oil, it starts jellifying. So the oil is jellified. You can see even single drop of oil is not coming out of the scoop. And now what you have is a clear drinkable water. Actually. In the other case, it won't work because there is no gelator. So unless you have gelato, this is not work. This is just a control experiment to show that our gelato, that the glucose-derived gelato was very important to have this clean, uh, I mean, the, the cleaning edge. So this clearly shows the difference. Now we are making much bigger version of this. So now, of course, now you know the problem and it can be solved. Sorry. So now we want to improve further. So the amount of oil each of this bowl, the bowl which I have shown previously, can encapsulate or take it is determined by the porosity of that material. If it is really porous, it can take that much oil. If it is not at all porous, it can take only very little oil. So in principle, we want to make large porosity. So for that, we thought of making a, a very porous uh, core and this is relatively denser shell like this actually. So that the gelatin is only here. So the oil goes inside, a lot of oil goes inside and it will jellify this part and close this so that we can improve the efficiency. So how do we do that? So for that we have used Two kinds of fiber. The fiber inside is coir fibers, our coir fiber, which you can make like this. Of course, much more, this is very dense, even very loose also you can make with a lot of space in between. And outside is covered with cotton. And that cotton is covered, I mean, in, now if you use this material, the inner core can carry a lot of oil and that way we can increase the efficiency. This is what uh, I want to show you here. So this this as big as this is for six inch, almost like a six to seven inch, right? So this is almost like a football sized uh, material one. And different uh, oil, you can see this is uh, the percentage uptake actually in world volume percentage. So this is a different uh, oil from different countries. We have used about uh, here. You have I have shown eight different oils. All of them. Uh, I mean, this material can this uh, sorbent can take up to sixty to seventy percent of this total volume. Now, how do we remove? Of course, once you press this oil, uh, the material you get all the oil back. I think I have some videos here. So here, I'm showing, he's syringing out the liquid oil from that. That means inside is not gel, it's only liquid oil. So this is the concept here, actually. So we want a lot of oil inside the core, 
where it is still in the liquid form, only the outside is gel. So he, this is still liquid. He can he syringing it out. The experiment was just to show that it is, as per our design, it is still liquid inside. I think this is same. This another one. This is just to just to show that how you can get the oil out of that. So this just by pressing, you will get the oil out. And what you get is the sorbent, almost clean. See the what is this? This is oil water. You are putting oil in that. These are the balls. Inside is of course coir fibers. You can see it's immediately sucking all the oil, it's selectively sucking. Only a little, it doesn't take even a single drop of water. It is very selective to oil. And after some time you can take out and press that material and you get the, yeah, this is also a possibility you can filter it. So the water now is clean. And this is again a bigger uh, bowl, oil and water. This is a bigger one, so cricket sized, uh, cricket bowl sized uh, uh, sorbents. You can see it's taking immediately, the oil is being absorbed immediately after a few minutes. There are some more remaining, so we have to add some more. Uh, more. This one. Yeah, so all the oil can be taken. Now, this is not really a lab scale. You can use this in real scenario also. You can make really a football sized or rugby sized, uh, rugby ball sized uh, sorbent or even much bigger bowl actually. And you can dispense through aerially dispense and you can also collect. It. Also, this will be uh, with the tides, it will come to the source so that can be collected. And also, you can make a chain of this one. You can tie these together, actually, and you can just pull it out from the sea, and you can get all the oil out using silly <coughs> method. I think this is the same. This is the very big one, actually, football size one. I think we are throwing only one such ball here. Sorry. So, let us take in all the oil, selectively oil. So, another application I want to show you is uh, carbon dioxide absorption. Another Carbon dioxide, the level of carbon dioxide is increasing because of our activity, whether it is industrial, uh, as an industrial pollutant or by burning coal or other firewood, etc. So human activities in basically increasing the carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere and that is also causing uh, global warming or considered to be causing global warming. And uh, there is a lot of interest to get material which can absorb this carbon dioxide. Once you absorb carbon dioxide, that can be converted to useful material, actually. So once you reduce carbon dioxide, you get formic acid, also for methanol meth meth or formaldehyde, all these kinds of uh, small, simple chemicals you can get, which is a building block for many other larger chemicals. So essentially, we can make value-added products from this waste carbon dioxide. The best known material to take carbon dioxide is calcium oxide. So calcium oxide takes a molecule of carbon dioxide to form calcium carbonate. 
And once you heat the calcium carbonate, it will release the carbon dioxide and again go back to the calcium oxide. So that means you can repeat the cycle n number of times and you can store the carbon dioxide each time in a cylinder, for example. But the problem here, here is uh, after a few cycles of carbonation, decarbonation, this happens at very high temperature. This becomes, the porosity of this material becomes much less and become non-porous, and it become an amorphous material. After some time, it cannot take a lot of carbon dioxide. It can take only carbon dioxide at the surface. Most of the inside part will not be accessible to the carbon dioxide, or carbon dioxide cannot go to the inner core, and thereby it will only react at the surface. So this is called sintering. This is bad, actually, because it is killing the efficiency of this carbonation process. So ideally, we want to make very small carbon particles so that the, the surface area is increased. So we thought you can use our gelator again. This is our gelator or gel making material. We can make gel out of TEOS. TEOS is a solvent tetraethoxycylene, which is a precursor for silica. So TEOS is a liquid. If you hydrolyze that, you will get silica, sand, for example. So you make a gelator, and this is the schematic actually. It will make a fibrous material. And then slowly you hydrolyze this one and it will make silica around this gel fibers. Then you can remove this out of that and you can remove the gelator from this tube actually. You will get this, what you get is a, this kind of cylindrical tube, silica tube. And these are all already in micrometer sized uh, tubes. So then you can grow crystals of calcium oxide on the surface. Since it is already micrometer domain, whatever inside will be nanometer domain. So you can make nano crystals of calcium oxide. And that will have much more uh, uh, surface area. And that can be used for uh, absorbing carbon dioxide. So this is the real picture, actually. This is the uh, silica fibers after making the silica fibers. Of course, you can see this is hollow. After once you remove, this is a... SCM picture, scanning electron microscopy picture. This the scale bar is five micrometer, and this is this scale bar is 0.2 micrometer or 200 nanometer, very very small scale actually. You can see this is uh, hollow actually. The silica gel is hollow, and what you have seen here, you are seeing here the small globules are the calcium oxide the crystals which we have grown. We have used this material here also. You can see TEMNH where you can see the calcium oxide nanocrystals in the tube. And this we have used. This has about 33% of calcium oxide remaining in silica. We have used for carbonation decarbonation. Initially, it has taken 23 weight percentage of carbon dioxide. Then it reduced slightly. And after 30 cycles, this is each cycle actually carbonation decarbonation, carbonation decarbonation. This is the weight percentage. After uh, 30 cycles, also we have about 13, 12 to 13 percentage by weight. That means 100 gram of this material can take 30 gram of carbon dioxide even after 30 cycles, so which is good. If you take the same composition of calcium oxide and silica, physically mixing calcium oxide and silica, of course, this is very low. First itself is uh, it goes to the sintering actually 10 percent. Then after 30 cycles, you can see this is the five mark, it's much less than five, about three percent. This is about 12 to 13 percent. So we have in principle shown that. Of course, our our use of gelator to make nanocrystals of calcium oxide would prevent this sintering and we can absorb carbon dioxide from atmosphere. Also, we can uh, use uh, gelators for making hybrid polymers and we can use them for uh, deionization of water. A lot of ions may be present in water which may not be suitable for drinking because of high concentration of potassium, for example. Potassium can bind with this kind of uh, molecule called crown ether. This looks like a crown, that's a crown ether. But these are useless compound because it's water soluble. So you cannot use this for uh, taking potassium out of water because this itself is water soluble. That will also pollute water. This is very similar to that, having an extra benzene group. So this is not water soluble. Unfortunately, this cannot be directly used uh, because uh, this is uh, insoluble and only the surface, uh, the potassium will be on the surface of these particles, not really inside, just like the carbon dioxide case I have mentioned. So usually you need a liquid out of that, liquid-liquid extraction. You have to dissolve this in a chloroform or some other solvent, then shake with water, then it will bring the potassium ion to the organic layer. This is not practically feasible for cleaning our drinking water. 
So this is what I said. If you make a pellet out of this one in solid, of course, if you put in potassium picrate, that the color is because of the potassium picrate. Of what you see is only potassium picrate is absorbed only on the surface. Once you cut the tablet, you can see most of the inside is unaccessed by the potassium. So this is not very efficient. So we used a gel again for making it better. So all these are gelators actually. These are all crown eaters which can bind with potassium or other metal ions. And we, it forms gels. It forms gels by making self-assembly like this. Crown either, crown either, crown either like that. They make a chain of crown either and that's why it forms fibers and gel. Thereby. So what we have used is we have taken styrene. You heard of polystyrene, which is a polymer. The styrofoam or thermocol, you say, that is polystyrene. So we have taken styrene, which is a liquid. Once you polymerize, you get polystyrene. So before polymerizing, what we have done is we have taken this crown either, which is the potassium binder. And this is another gelator, which is uh, which I have already shown for the oil spill recovery. So we have taken two gelators and made a gel out of this before polymerization. And now I have shown this is uh, forming one kind of fiber because they are self-assembly forming one kind of fiber. The other crown either is forming another kind of fiber in the matrix. Now you polymerize this one by in, by putting a radical initiator and you have a really thick block of this polymer material. Once this is polymerized, you can wash off this particular one, the blue one. Actually. You can remove this blue uh, uh, fibers by just by washing with water or other solvents. So that means you will have gaps or pores there. And inside you have crown either. This is crown either. And the, the red one is crown either. So your solvent can not only access the outside surface and also it can go inside and bind with potassium and and remove potassium. So this is the real scanning electron microscopy image of this material. You can see it's really porous. And this is where the crown either is sitting. And we have used this material. This is again potassium picrate. Before putting this tablet into that, once you put the tablet, it has taken the potassium and it is clean water. Of course, this is more scientific data. This is the absorbance of uh, picrate ion before uh, treating. And this is after treating, of course, you can see the intensity has reduced. In two, three cycles, you can remove almost 97% of potassium from water. If you drink a lot of, uh, I mean, pot uh, potassium containing water, that will lead to disease called hyperkalemia, which is bad. So in such cases, uh, we, one can use this kind of material to remove such potassium and other metal ions. Uh, clean water, another application. So in uh, uh, this uh, darkling beetle, this uh, this is a beetle uh, usually found in uh, uh, desert, actually. Uh, so how it uh, take water from atmosphere is like this. It, it has a lot of uh, thorny structures on its uh, this legs, actually. Really fibrous, thorny structure. And that has some affinity towards water and it can attract water. After so enough water is absorbed, this metal, metal stand like this so that all the water will come to its mouth and it will drink water. And this is how this insect survives, actually. In, in countries where there is no water, or there is no rain, for example. Of course, cactus also, you know, cactus also has this kind of thorny structure where you have fibrous structures which you cannot see by a naked eye, but there are fibrous structures if you see under a microscope and that can attract water and that's how cactus also takes water. So this, uh, this kind of material is being produced in the lab. Some people, some scientists make this kind of material which has this kind of thorny structure and which can take water. And that is... You have to mute it. Yes, mute sir. So, uh, this can be used for harvesting water. So, this is the problem with water is, currently, uh, we have about 8 billion people in the world. Only 40% of this 8 billion has access to clean water throughout the year. At least one month, for one month, 60% of the global population don't have access to clean water. Now, after 10 years, our global population will be 9 billion, 900 crores. And that time, only 10% of the global population will have access to water. 
ninety percent will not have access to water throughout the year, and this is a big problem. And every country in the United Nations and everybody is trying to get new sources of water. How to get pure water? Lot of water is there in the atmosphere. This is what the darkling beetle is using for harvesting water. And similarly, we can make material. One can make material which can harvest atmospheric water. Atmosphere has at least six times water present in the normal uh, water bodies in Earth. So that's huge. So we can use that water by tapping water from atmosphere. So such uh, with, uh, what uh, water harvesting at least being used. We also work on that, and, and in my lab also we work on that. We have made a material which can take 18 liters of make 18 liters of water from atmosphere, just air actually. This is a protein-based material. And there are many other people working on this area. This is a, this is a very challenging and very uh, a new area of research actually to uh, solve the water problem. I think uh, almost one hour now. So that much only I have for this uh, atmospheric, uh, I mean, saving the environment using chemicals. Maybe there are other... Uh, this one, which, but unfortunately, I don't have uh, more slides on this one. Maybe I can take more questions. Thank you. Hi. Hello, uh, Professor Good evening, Anna, sir. <laughs> What's going on here? Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Hello, it was a wonderful talk. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Suresh, we are some common friends, so... Uh, ever since I heard of you, I've been very, I mean, ardent fan of yours. <laughs> I keep telling people about you. I think I am the contemporary of Professor Sebastian and a good friend of Jamis. And oh, Sadhguru okay. is almost like a brother to me. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah, I'm the contemporary of uh, Sebastian. <laughs> okay, we are together in the institute. Yes, yes. I haven't told about. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, about idea. I think. Yes, yes. Time. Good. I've been waiting to see you actually. I know I want to. Good to see you and uh, amazing. Yes, it's, it's a very good talk. Uh, very down to earth and uh, you 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 make the solutions and try to find the uh, answer to that and that's the way the research should go. And I'm I'm fairly familiar with um, when I when I listen to your talk you know, on gels, I keep thinking about the oil and water immersion and the water and oil immersion. There's some relation with somewhere. Through this, but this is this is uh, this almost like the oil in water, right? You suck in the oil, and instead of the water, uh, you have the your gelatin structure outside, and you suck in the oil. And um, I'm sure that most of the students would have got some idea of this. And, uh, I'm very impressed. <laughs> okay, uh, very nice thing to talk, and uh, this will have. Um, Especially uh, the, the water part which you have been talking about, no? and that's that's the danger in front of us. I mean, it's yes. not a calamity which is imaginary. I mean, just like the global warming, I mean, it's all there. Yeah, the, it's uh, it's real. It's going to be real. It's real. I think nobody really <laughs> think about it, but we are going to hit the thing. Uh, so unless we, people like you do something, and I'm glad that uh, the scientific world is doing something for this. Hope these things really. Get scaled up and uh, yeah. 
get it done. Okay, because initially, you know, when you're talking about the the, the oil spill and collecting it, I was thinking um, because you have a magnetic stirrer, so you need to stir it. And how do you do that in the ocean? That's what I was thinking. Then when you move to the bowls, no, that's not necessary really. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. And the the porous bowls, you started with the paper bowl, then you move to the larger baseball size bowls. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, are they made up of, uh, and that has your gelator uh, indignator right inside. Ooh. And uh, what is that uh, skeleton of the, the ball? You know, the, uh, the one which keeps its shape. Uh, is there some polystyrene or something? The no, just, just coir fibers actually. So we roll into bolts shape actually. Right. There, is nothing, there is nothing, no, no polystyrene or anything else. Okay. Only coir fibers, then yeah. covered with cotton. Yeah, and yeah. that can be cellulose also. I mean, right. normal cellulose. Yeah. yeah. Great uh, perspiration. It has been wonderful listening to the talk. And uh, and it doesn't make sense, but still, I wish you all the best. I'm quite serious Thank to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My only concern was uh, because uh, I did not know what to pitch. And what, so that's yeah. why he was... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's okay. I mean, there are a lot of students. And, but this gives an overview. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we at least know the students go away with the feeling that, yeah, this yeah. is being taken care of by somebody else. This is amazing. I mean, when an oil spill is there, there's another way uh, rather than putting fire yeah. and destroying the whole thing, you can recover the whole thing. Yes. Especially, uh, oil is a scarcity. Okay, so we can't just throw it away. And uh, you do it in such a uh, large scale and looking at different crude oil from different. Yeah. This is, Actually, this is, United yes. Nations uh, has contacted me and also a few oil companies and I also in, Indian Coast Guard oh. to make, yeah. it, make, it, make it to a bigger uh, scale. Yeah. Actually, We are trying to lose. Yeah, wonderful. Thank, thank you very much. And now I, I think a lot of people will be with a lot of questions. I don't want to take any more time. Okay, thank you. When, when, I, when I come to ISA sometime, I will just uh, meet please, you. Please, please. Uh, we'll uh, Good. Yeah. Otherwise. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes. And uh, the thing is, uh, you have put uh, research into application. Usually, research doesn't come out for uh, <laughs> with something which is useful. But yours is a wonderful work. I would like to know whether this uh, ball which you create is squeezable and reusable. You squeezed it out, all the oils from it. But uh, can you reuse it? That's, that's the only question I have got. Okay, thanks. So that's a good question, actually. And uh, everywhere I get this question, wherever I present this. Uh, of course, you can squeeze out and, and reuse it, provided you again impregnate with the gelatin. Because once you squeeze out, you are also taking the gelator along with the oil. So, gelator is no more there. So, what we should do is after squeezing it out, again, you have to dip this in, the, in a solution of gelator and dry it and again reuse it. That's possible. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, hello? Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I think it was a nice one when I initially thought. I think it is in this uh, talk. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to get, but uh, it was really an interesting uh, uh, talk which you have delivered. It's not only interesting, it is quite now relevant now because it is that the environmental danger is... Uh, uh, now it is uh, threatening because of this oil slip and other things. But my only question is, has it been uh, taken to the field and then have you tested it and then you have some uh, positive results or you still it is in the lab only? If yeah. so, yeah. Uh, what is the kind of uh, uh, oil which has been extracted and the kind of... Uh, 
uh, okay how long it takes to clear a square kilometer area kind of it this is basically i would like to know uh, whether these things can be put in a practical way and then so that this can be applicable of course it's a very good uh, uh work which has been done in the lab whether that has been taken into the actual field and do we have any results on that that is what i'm more interesting thank you for your uh, yeah thanks uh, for that question again uh, actually we have been tested this but we are trying to test with uh, in collaboration with the uh, nio goa national institute of oceanography they have this capacity actually to check uh, in the real sea environment and also they can simulate the sea kind of environment in a, in a tank small much bigger than our scale but a smaller scale compared to sea and they can also test in a, in a boom uh, using boom they can create a point uh, uh, scenario so we are trying to talk to them uh, and uh, we are trying to solve that we have not done that yet how okay. uh, how efficient it's very quick actually because of uh, the surface pressure it immediately sucks in once it is sucks in it doesn't release it immediately jellyfy so the the right limiting step is how it, uh, quickly we can uh, spread this bolt to the affected area so this is that's all okay thank you sir all the best i think probably uh, you should succeed and then uh, this is going to be the one of the very cleanest method as well as it's not only going to clean the environment we will get back the oil also that is another positive aspect of it okay sir yeah. thank you so much thank you thank, thank you. you sir the students are there with some questions and i request abiram tp to handle this question and answer session abiram tp is a uh, higher secondary student is about joining his higher studies Abhiram, are you there? Abhiram. The most hungry. Okay. Hello, sir. Okay, okay. Then Adil, it's a sixth grader. You can ask him if you have difficulty in English. You can uh, ask in Malayalam also. Adil, introduce yourself. He say Adil. He say Prajish is not uh, that. His name is father. And uh, Adil, you can speak well. Okay. Hello, sir. അപ്പൊ എന്റെ സംശയം എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് സാർ ഇപ്പൊ പറഞ്ഞില്ലായിരുന്നു ഡാർക്കിംഗ് ബീറ്റിൽ എയറിൽ നിന്ന് വെള്ളം എടുക്കുന്നത് അതുപോലെ വേറെ ചെടി ഉണ്ടല്ലോ വാണ്ട അതിന് എയറിൽ നിന്ന് വെള്ളം എടുത്തൂടെ മരവാഴ മരവാഴയുടെ മെക്കാനിസം എനിക്കറിയില്ല മരവാഴ സാധാരണ വെള്ളം ഇല്ലാത്തൊരു സ്ഥലത്തല്ലോ ഉണ്ടാവും അതൊരു ഓർക്കിഡ് ഫാമിലി ആണ് മരവാഴയുടെ കടം ചോദിക്കും ഒരിക്കൽ ഒരു ലിറ്റർ വെള്ളം വേണം അതല്ലേ അതിന്റെ ചാലഞ്ച് ഡാർക്ക് ക്ലീം ബീറ്റിംഗിൽ വെച്ചിട്ട് നമുക്ക് എടുക്കുന്നില്ല അത് ഞാനൊരു എക്സാമ്പിൾ പറഞ്ഞതാണ് ഡാർക്ക് ക്ലീം ബീറ്റിംഗിൽ അത് നമ്മള് ബയോ മിമിക്രി ആണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ബയോളജിക്കൽ സിസ്റ്റത്തിൽ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നാച്ചുറൽ സിസ്റ്റത്തിലുള്ള ഇത് മിമിക് ചെയ്യാണ് ആ ഡാർക്ക് ക്ലീം ബീറ്റിംഗിന്റെ ആ തോണി സ്ട്രക്ചറും അതിന്റെ വാട്ടർ അബ്സോർബിംഗ് പ്രോപ്പർട്ടിയാണ് അതിന് സഹായിക്കുന്നത് മറ്റൊന്നുമല്ല അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ വീട്ടിൽ നിന്നല്ല വെള്ളം എടുക്കുന്നത് അതുപോലുള്ള മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഉണ്ടാക്കുകയാണ് ഇപ്പൊ മരവാഴയുടെ അത് ശരിയാണെങ്കിൽ മരവാഴയുടെ സ്ട്രക്ചർ നോക്കിയിട്ട് അതിൽ ബെറ്റർ ആണെങ്കിൽ പക്ഷെ അതൊരു മിമിക് ആയിരിക്കും മരവാഴ വെച്ചിട്ട് ചെയ്യില്ല മനസ്സിലായില്ലേ ഓക്കെ അതിൽ മനസ്സിലായി കാണുന്നു വിചാരിക്കും യു തിങ്ക് അബൌട്ട് ദാറ്റ് സാറ് പറഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്നത് നീ പ്രകൃതിയിലൊക്കെ നോക്കുക ഇതുപോലുള്ള ഫിനോമിന ഒക്കെ ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അതുപോലുള്ള മെറ്റീരിയൽ ലബോറട്ടറിയിൽ ഉണ്ടാക്കി നമുക്ക് ഗുണപരമായ ആവശ്യങ്ങൾക്ക് ഉപയോഗിക്കാൻ കഴിയും എന്നതിന്റെ ഒരു ഉദാഹരണമാണ് ഉത്തരം <laughs> 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 
അത് ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞു ഇനിയും പറയണമെങ്കിൽ പറയാം അതായത് വാൻഡ വെച്ചിട്ട് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഡാർക്ക്ലിംഗ് ബീറ്റിൽ വെച്ചിട്ടല്ല നമ്മൾ വെള്ളം എടുക്കുന്നത് ഡാർക്ക്ലിംഗ് ബീറ്റിൽ ഒരു എക്സാമ്പിൾ ആയിട്ട് എടുത്ത് അതിന്റെ സ്ട്രക്ചർ അതിനെ ആ ഹാർവസ്റ്റിന് എന്താണോ സഹായിക്കുന്നത് അതിന് അതുപോലുള്ള സ്ട്രക്ചർ നമ്മൾ മെമിക് ചെയ്തിട്ട് ആർട്ടിഫിഷ്യൽ മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഉണ്ടാക്കിയിട്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ വെള്ളം എടുക്കുന്നത് അതുപോലെ പറഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പോ ആ മരവാഴയിലുള്ള എന്താണോ അതിനെ സഹായിക്കുന്നത് അതിന്റെ സ്ട്രക്ചർ നോക്കിയിട്ട് അതിന് ആരെങ്കിലും പ്രജീഷ് മിമിക് ചെയ്തിട്ട് നാളെ ഒരു മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഉണ്ട് പ്രജീഷ് ഉണ്ടാക്കിയ പ്രജീഷൻ അങ്ങനെ ചെയ്യാം കാര്യങ്ങൾക്കൊക്കെ ഇപ്പൊ ഏറ്റവും വലിയൊരു എനിമി അല്ലെങ്കിൽ പ്രഡാറ്റർ എന്ന് പറയുന്നതാണ് ഈ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് അറിയുന്നത് അപ്പൊ ഇപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ വിചാരിക്കും ഈ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് നമുക്ക് തിന്നാൻ പറ്റിയിരുന്നെങ്കിൽ പകുതിയോളം പോയി കിട്ടായിരുന്നു പക്ഷെ അത് നടക്കുന്ന കാര്യമല്ല എന്നാൽ ഇപ്പൊ സയന്റിസ്റ്റുകൾ ഇറക്കി ഉണ്ടും പോലും അതായത് നമ്മളിപ്പോ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് കുപ്പിയിലല്ലേ വെള്ളം കുടിക്കുന്നത് അതുപോലെ ഒരു ബോള് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക്കിന്റെ ഒരു ബോളിൽ ഒന്നായിട്ട് വീങ്ങാന്ന് അതായത് ഒന്നായിട്ട് നമ്മൾ തിന്നാന്ന് അത് സത്യമാണോ എനിക്കറിയില്ല ഞാൻ അതിനെ കുറിച്ച് കേട്ടിട്ടില്ല പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് നമ്മൾ കഴിക്കാൻ പറ്റില്ല നമ്മുടെ കേക്കെ പറയണേ നമ്മുടെ ദഹന വ്യവസ്ഥയിൽ എൻസൈംസ് ഉണ്ട് ഓരോന്നിനെയും ദഹിപ്പിക്കാനുള്ള നമ്മൾക്ക് ഇപ്പൊ സ്റ്റാർച്ചിനെ ദഹിപ്പിക്കാം അതായത് കാർബോഹൈഡ്രേറ്റ് ദഹിപ്പിക്കാം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ പ്രോട്ടീനെ ദഹിപ്പിക്കാം പെപ്റ്റിഡേസസ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ പ്രോട്ടീസസ് ഉണ്ട് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഫാറ്റിനെ ദഹിപ്പിക്കാൻ വേണ്ടി ലിപ്പേസസ് എൻസൈംസ് ഉണ്ട് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക്കിനെ ദഹിപ്പിക്കാനുള്ള യാതൊരു എൻസൈം മനുഷ്യ ശരീരത്തിലല്ല ഏതൊരു ശരീരത്തിലും ഇല്ല പക്ഷെ ചില ബാക്ടീരിയാസ് ഇപ്പോഴും നമ്മൾ വീട്ടിൽ ചെയ്തിട്ട് ബാക്ടീരിയാസ് ഉണ്ടാക്കിയിട്ടുണ്ട് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക്കിനെ വിഘടിക്കാൻ പറ്റുന്നത് അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾക്ക് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് കഴിക്കാൻ പറ്റില്ല പിന്നെ സാറേ അവര് പറയുന്ന വെച്ചാല് ഈ പറയുന്ന പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക്കില് പല മാറ്റങ്ങളും വരുത്തി ഇതാ പോലെ ഈ കവറിലാക്കി തരുന്നത് ഒരു ചെറിയ ബോൾ മാറ്റ കാപ്സൂളിലാക്കി തരുന്നത് ഓക്കെ ആദിൻ 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 ഓക്കെ ദെൻ റെസ്ബിൻ ലത്തീഫ് ഇസ് देयर സം വിത്ത് സം ക്വസ്റ്റിയൻ ഗിവ്സ് റൈസിംഗ് സം ഹാൻഡ്സ് देयर റെസ്ബിൻ ലത്തീഫ് റെസ്ബിൻ ആർ യു देयर യെസ് സർ ഓക്കെ എന്റെ പേര് റഹ്മൽ ലത്തീഫ് ഞാനിവിടെ കുട്ടിക്കാട്ട് ഭാഗത്താണ് ടെൻത്ത് സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡിൽ പഠിക്കുന്നു സാറിന് പാക്കോളെ ഇൻഫോർമേറ്റീവ് ആയിരുന്നു ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ അതായത് നമ്മൾ ഒന്ന് ഏറ്റവും കൂടുതൽ ഫേസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരു പ്രശ്നമാണ് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് പൊല്യൂഷൻ അപ്പൊ അതിനെ പറ്റി ഡീറ്റെയിൽ ആയിട്ട് സാർ പറഞ്ഞതായിട്ട് കേട്ടില്ല ഈ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് പൊല്യൂഷൻ നമുക്ക് എങ്ങനെ അവോയ്ഡ് ചെയ്യാനായിട്ട് പറ്റും അതിന് എന്തെങ്കിലും ടെക്നിക്സ് ഉണ്ടോ ഈ നമ്മുടെ സിസ്റ്റത്തിൽ നമ്മുടെ നാട്ടുകാർക്കുള്ള ഒരു ധാരണ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ആണ് ഇവിടുത്തെ വലിയ പ്രശ്നം നമ്മൾ പറയുന്ന ഈ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് പൊല്യൂഷൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ആ ഒരു സോയിലില് പോകുമ്പോഴ് ഈ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ബാഗ് പോലുള്ള പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ഇല്ലാത്തൊരു ജീവിതം നമുക്ക് പോസിബിൾ ആണോ ചിന്തിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ടോ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ഇല്ലെങ്കിൽ നമ്മുടെ വീട്ടിൽ ഇലക്ട്രിസിറ്റി എത്തില്ല നമ്മുടെ വീട്ടിൽ നമ്മുടെ കയ്യിൽ ഫോൺ ഉണ്ടാവില്ല നിങ്ങൾക്ക് എനിക്ക് ഇവിടെ കമ്പ്യൂട്ടർ ഉണ്ടാവില്ല നമുക്ക് ഒന്നും തന്നെ ഉണ്ടാവില്ല പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ആണ് ഒരു റെവല്യൂഷൻ ഉണ്ടാക്കിയത് ലോകത്തില് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് എയറോപ്ലെയിൻ ഉണ്ടാവില്ല അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ബസ് ഉണ്ടാവില്ല ഒന്നും ഉണ്ടാവില്ല പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ഇല്ലാത്തൊരു ജീവിതം പോസിബിൾ അല്ല ഹ്യൂമൺ ഓക്കെ അപ്പൊ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് എന്ന് കാടടച്ച് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് മോശമാണെന്നല്ല പറയുന്നത് ഈ ചെറിയ സൈസിലുള്ള ചില പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് നമ്മുടെ സോയിലില് പോയാൽ അതിന്റെ സോയിൽ ക്വാളിറ്റി നഷ്ടം മോശമാക്കും പക്ഷെ അത് ഡിസിന്റിഗ്രേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാതുകൊണ്ട് അപ്പൊ അത് മിനിമൈസ് ചെയ്യാൻ അതുകൊണ്ട് ബയോ ഡീക്രേഡ് പോളിമർ ഉണ്ടാക്കുക എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഇപ്പോഴത്തെ അപ്രോച്ച് അങ്ങനെയുള്ള ഇത് വിജയിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുകയാണ് എക്സ്പെൻസീവ് ആണ് ഇപ്പൊ കോൺ സ്റ്റാർച്ച് ഒക്കെ വെച്ചിട്ട് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ഉണ്ടാകുന്നുണ്ട് അതായത് സ്റ്റാർച്ച് ബേസ്ഡ് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് അത് സോയിലില് പോയാൽ പ്രശ്നമില്ല അത് ഉടനെ തന്നെ ഡിസിന്റഗ്രേറ്റ് ചെയ്തിട്ട് സ്മോളർ മോളിക്യൂൾസ് ആയിട്ട് മാറും മറ്റേ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് നമുക്ക് അവോയ്ഡ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ഒരു പൊല്യൂഷൻ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ എങ്ങനെയാണ്
waste plastics. Ustaz, uh, all uh, plastic is uh, recyclable, isn't it? മെറ്റീരിയൽസ് ആണ് വെള്ളത്തിലിട്ട് അതായത് സോല്യബിൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ള പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ഇൻവെന്റ് ചെയ്തു നീ അടുത്ത് കേട്ടു അതായത് വെള്ളത്തിലിട്ട് അലിഞ്ഞു പോകുന്ന തരത്തിലുള്ള പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ഉപയോഗത്തിന് ശേഷം അപ്പൊ അങ്ങനത്തെ ടൈപ്പ് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അങ്ങനത്തെ മെറ്റീരിയൽസിന്റെ എണ്ണം കൂട്ടിയാൽ അത് ഈ വേസ്റ്റ് ആയിട്ട് വരുന്നത് കുറയ്ക്കാൻ പറ്റില്ലേ അതാണ് ഞാൻ ഓൾറെഡി പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞത് അതായത് ബയോഡിഗ്രേഡബിൾ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ആണ് ഉദ്ദേശിക്കുന്നത് ഈ സ്റ്റാർച്ച് ബേസ്ഡ് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ഒക്കെ ഉണ്ടായ സ്വെൽ ചെയ്യും അത് എന്താ പറയാ അത് സോയിൽ ബാക്ടീരിയ അതിനെ വീട്ടിലെത്തിക്കും അങ്ങനെയുള്ളതാണ് യൂസ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറയുന്നത് ഇപ്പൊ ചില നാട്ടിൽ പോയാൽ ഇപ്പൊ നമുക്ക് സാധാ പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് കിട്ടുന്നല്ലോ ഇപ്പം ഞാൻ പയ്യന്നൂരിനാണ് പയ്യന്നൂർ മുനിസിപ്പാലിറ്റിയില് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ഇല്ല ഇങ്ങനെയാണ് <laughs> are all the non newtonian are non newtonian fluids gels when non newtonian fluid is what a fluid that becomes liquid when a little pressure is uh, fluid that becomes liquid when a little pressure is added fluid and liquid when high pressure is added fluid and liquid when what is the difference fluid thornal what word ാണ് <laughs> 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 ജെല് ആവണെങ്കിൽ ജെല്ലിന്റെ ഡെഫിനേഷൻ ആണ് ഞാൻ പറയുന്നത് അതിലൊരു സോളിഡ് കമ്പോണന്റ് വേണം അതിലൊരു ലിക്വിഡ് കമ്പോണന്റ് വേണം that is a mixture of solid and liquid appo liquid valare koodal aayirikkum solid valare koru aayirikkum aa solid liquid inde fluidity korakkan vendi adine capillary action vendi vali korakkunnadu ee fibrous network il pidichittu allega entrap cheyittu fluidity of the liquid korakkunna oru pradibhasa aanu gelation so you need both actually for gels thank you sir Yeah, next. Ashwin, are you here? Ashwin? Okay, I guess. Uh, Suresh Kunjukuti. Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, sir, my name is Shriya. Uh, my name is Shriya. Uh, and first of all, I want to thank you for this wonderful session. Uh, my doubt to you is that uh, what is the peculiarity of the fibrous structure that makes it uh absorbed uh, that makes it help to absorb the water in the atmosphere okay so that takes water by hydrogen bonding there are there are sites which can attract water through hydrogen bonding i don't know either 
sixth standard student won't understand what is hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is some attractive force which, uh, which for example, with that keeps water as liquid actually. Several water molecules are held together by weak uh, attractive interaction called hydrogen bonding. And similar hydrogen bonding is possible between this particular fibrous material which we have developed and water. And that's how this attracts water. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, sir, am I audible? You are. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. First of all, uh, it was an amazing session. We were eagerly waiting for the session uh, when we read the uh, title of your presentation, sir. Uh, this session will definitely motivate the youngsters like us. So, I would like to thank you for such a wonderful session. And it was a relevant one. So, let's move to the next question. So, uh, I can see uh, Gen C Joe's raised uh, one question in the chat box. Gen C, uh, can you please ask your question? Gen C Joe's. Abhiram, is there any other student who can ask directly? Okay, so an opportunity to ask uh, any question regarding chemistry uh, here. You can oh, okay, sir. Okay. okay, sir. So I would like to ask one question from my side, sir. Uh, so, so many scientific experiments are going now, uh, making threat to our mother nature. In your point of view, how far is uh, the time when we will achieve? Uh, the exact meaning of sustainable development. No, I am not the person who can predict that. I, actually, uh, people are trying to get uh, sustainable. I mean, we are, especially chemists, are trying to uh, address the challenge of uh, sustainability. For example, we can today we can make uh, uh, drug molecules which otherwise uh, we had to we had to harvest from plants or in other words we have to kill the plants for example pacific yew is a tree which has to be killed or cut into pieces to make a taxon which is an anti-cancer compound and that's a very slow growing tree and it takes about 25 years for the tree to grow to a harvestable stage and for treating all the cancer patients in the world you need you need to cultivate the, the specific yew in the whole world actually which is not practically possible so, for example, chemists have addressed this and we can synthesize this material in the test tube. Another molecule of similar kind is a drug for breast cancer, which is pancreatostatin. Again, which is in a tuber of some onion kind of molecule called spider lily. Again, we can synthesize such material. Now, all the uh, energy, for energy we have uh, uh, we have developed material which can harvest uh, solar energy and store as a battery, right? So this is also a sustainable solution. And so, so that, that, that will solve the energy energy issue or the fossil fuel. We will not depend on fossil fuels. So we, we can uh, get away. I mean, we don't need to depend on um, fossil fuel soon that we will come to that state soon. So these are uh, some of the solutions, uh, sustainable solutions. Not all, but maybe it will take years to solve all the problems. Uh, hello, sir. my name is Ashwin Sridev. So uh, I have a question and that is, uh, you said these gelato bowls, right, which can absorb crude oil from the ocean water. So uh, my concern is, how would these bowls be interacted with by other marine life, which will be close? I think uh, you completely do not understand uh, because once it absorbs, we have to collect this bolts back and skews the oil out and use that. Right. So we are taking the oil out of the ocean. No, not in that sense. These bowls can be swallowed by turtles and stuff, right? That's what I was asking. Oh, turtles, can, of course. <laughs> so this, that's why we have to make really big ones, first of all. And, and that is a that is a small possibility. So any application, whenever you make an application, risk versus benefit, you have to 
see, right? So that is our risk, risk uh, benefit analysis. Of course, you can ask, uh, yeah, some amount of turtle or something which can swallow this one, and it might die, and all those things can be asked. But risk versus benefit. Benefit is more than the risk. Uh, sir, I have another question. So, uh, you said these, uh, you know, the use of materials to harvest uh, the humidity in the atmosphere as drinking water, right? So, instead of using these uh, microbial structures, uh, could we use these uh, large scale, uh, large scale condensers instead to harvest that? The problem is energy. So you can use condenser. The so, so only issue is that to cool down that much condenser, you spend a lot of energy than the amount, the water you get actually. So that's not energy efficient. Of course, you can cool. For example, you see the condensation of water in a cooled surface or your car, car uh, this one, for example, uh, wind shade and all, all those things. So the cooling such a large surface by for harvesting, this one is not energetically feasible, uh, economically feasible. Uh, but uh, if you use these microbial structures, it will take a lot of time, right, to gather a sufficient no. amount of water to justify that? No, I think uh, that's a little bit of a problem in understanding. It's microbial structure means structure is only microbial. We have microscopy, a lot of microbial structure, right? So we have a kilogram of material which can take 18 liters. So the structure is only microbial where it is taking water. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, go on. I can hear. Yeah, sir. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I just have this query that you mentioned about the absorption rate of different oils, right? Like from different countries. Go on, please. So uh, why was it like there was a difference between the absorption rate of this oil from different countries. Why was it like that? Yeah, so each of the soil has uh, different components. Actually, all are not same. So they have uh, different fractions. The, uh, some are having some hydrophilic material like uh, aromatic compounds, which are hydrophilic actually, having a, a such and OH, etc. So their attraction to this hydrophobic surface is maybe different. So the composition of each oil is different. That's the essential uh, reason for this. So like, uh, it's hydrophilic nature because of the, the place of origin. Say it again. Like, uh, is this difference in this, you know, uh, the hydrophilicity that you mentioned, is it because of the, like, where it comes from or the climatic conditions and all that? No, that's what I said. Each... Compor each oil has different components depending on the location. The, the constituents, the chemical constituents are slightly different. They are not same. For example, Bombay, Ravais, Rafan, Kuwait is uh, different. They're, uh, uh, even the, uh, what is a fluidity or uh, viscosity is different. The density is different. The components are different. Thank you, sir. Sir, can I respond to you? My name is Bhavya Ravindran and we are able to remove oil completely from water. But the major problem of today's society is having lack of time to clean our own water tanks. So is there any way to remove those dirt traces using gelatos? So what I was thinking was that in both these cases, uh, the purity of the water matters. So, we are not concerned about <laughs> lazy people, right, to clean their track. So, anyway, to make it, uh, it's a joke, actually. So, so uh, we, uh, a question-based company is interested in using our material to clean the uh, uh, sewage system, for example, which also has a lot of oil. So that has to be, oil has to be removed from that before it goes for further treatment. Otherwise, it can, it can kill bacteria, for example. Uh, the sewage treatment plant and also the sunlight treatment plant. So such application is possible, not once on an individual tank. Yet. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank
ओके थैंक यू सर नाम प्लास्टिक कॉल्यूशन कॉयल बयोडिग्रेडब सोईल बाकी चांस बेसिकलीसोजनिक मेटीरियल बेन्सिन अरोमेटिक सब्सटनस अब अटमोसफिय डेजरस कंप्लीट कॉयलो प्लास्टिक स्टूडेंट शास्त्र नाटक मतसानो प्लास्टिक उपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयोगपयो
there is uh, there is no reason other than it will roll if it is a flat one and only one surface will be exposed all, all the time if you put it in the water surface otherwise if it is round it will roll actually and all the surface will be exposed okay sir Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, today is 58 webinar on the subject of uh, the world of chemicals under the auspices of UL, uh, UL Space Club was very beneficial for us, just like the previous webinars. I thank Professor Kana Sirishan, sir, Professor of School of Chemistry, Iso Thiruvindavaram, who made each and everyone enlightened in the world of chemicals. And I express gratitude to E.K. Kutti, sir, founder and mentor of UL Space Club, for giving these kinds of wonderful opportunities to uh, each and every one of us to be a part of this webinar. I would like to thank Shadli UK, sir, who moderated uh, this 58th successful webinar. Uh, once again, on behalf of Spring Valley School, I would like to thank everyone, especially Professor Kana Sirishan, sir, the uh, organizers of this webinar, who gave Spring, uh, Spring Valley School the opportunity to co-host this webinar. And it's every students and teachers who have contributed in a super of this. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.